This is a talk about intelligence. It's a big topic. It's an interesting topic. It's a dangerous topic. Why dangerous? Because different people have different levels of it and different peoples have different, intel different levels of it. This is no surprise to scientists. They've known it for more than 100 years but it's not politic to talk about it. Fortunately, I live in a free country. What is intelligence? If you take a thousand people by any measure, you'll find that most of them line up kind of in the middle and others are at extremes. And this is certainly true of intelligence. And this diagram, the scatter diagram, average intelligence, which we define as 100, would be in the middle. And that's where you find most people, with a few outliers on the left, those would be the less smart people, and a few outliers on the right, those would be the smarter people. We, intelligence is a totally human construct, and nobody discovered it, they defined it. We define 100 as the average intelligence among Americans and English. And we change that every generation because it changes. And by definition, we say that two thirds of the people we measure will be between 85 and 115. And by definition, 96% will be between 70 and 130. That's how we do it. And then we, we actually measure people. We give tests to a whole bunch of people and so we see how they sort out. Questions are, Questions that can be answered right or wrong, such as <clears throat> a frying pan and a spatula together cost 110 grivna. The frying pan costs 100 grivna more than the spatula. How much does the spatula cost? Raise your hand if you got five. You got that one right. I'll give you 100 questions like that. I can tell pretty much how smart you are and how smart you are is a big determinant of what you do in society. We have a bell curve distribution that shows where people are. Most people right in the middle, or toward, the, toward the middle, with a few people out toward the edges, the not very smart ones and the smart ones. What do people do depends on how smart they are. If you're if you're a functioning person, but you're a little bit below average, you will work as a fast food clerk or a trucker or an assembler, typically, typically. If you're a bit above average, you will typically work as a clerk, a policeman or a fireman. If you are slow but function, functional, you can work as an elder care worker, a daycare worker, or a guard, typically. And if you're sharper than the average, you can work as a teacher, a programmer, or, or something like that. There are a lot of jobs open to you if you're above average intelligence. If you're really smart, in the top 2%, you can become a doctor, a lawyer, professor, some other professional. There's a lot of blurred lines here. You, you know a lot of smart people who work as lifeguards, fine. But to be a professional, you usually have to be fairly smart. Conversely, there are people at the other end who really can't do much of anything. They're lucky if they're employed. They're very often on unemployment, very often in institutions of one sort or another. Okay, now all of this is standardized on American and English society, people like me. But the averages are different in different societies. For instance, in East Asia, the Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans, the averages are a little bit higher. You might notice where <clears throat> most of your handheld gadgets come from, <coughs> where toys are made and so on. Those people are pretty smart. So that <coughs> they have more engineers and people like that. 
conversely, there are societies where people aren't as smart. The, the world average intelligence is somewhere around 85. And there are whole societies that are not as productive. And they're not turning out handheld gadgets or software such as Google or Twitter or whatever. And in fact, there are societies that are considerably lower. They don't get much done, but they still have to fill all the normal roles. There's something we don't like to talk about, but there's a high correlation between the average intelligence in a country and the income of that country. So the countries of smart people tend to be countries of rich people. There are exceptions, but that's the rule. More than that, intelligence changes over time. Researchers figure that our intelligence has fallen since the Industrial Revolution, those of us that went through it, our ancestors did, and it may have fallen quite a bit. It may have fallen by as much as 15 points. How do they know this? Among other things, they look at the books that were written for the average man 150 years ago. The average man cannot read them today. They're too full of big words, complex structures, plot structures that would bore us today because we're not smart enough to keep up with them. So all of this is in motion. By the way, we define intelligence as average of 100 for a particular time. And what this means is that the a person from 150 years ago might score 115 today, but he would have been 100 on an intelligence test if they had them 150 years ago. Okay, where does intelligence come from is the next big question. There's a simple answer that people don't like. It's inherited. 80% of it is heritable, and the other 20% cannot be explained. And you will rush in to tell me I'm wrong to say that it's one of the following. It's uh, your home environment, your neighborhood, your schools. But it is none of the above. They have exhaustively researched these, and it's not that. These things influence your intelligence, your measured intelligence, when you're in school. But by the time you get to be 40, certainly by the time you're my age, they have all washed away. Intelligence can be attributed to nothing other than your DNA. How do they know this? Well, there are lots of different measures, but the most interesting is looking at identical twins and siblings. Siblings are closer than, than average people in intelligence, but they still vary widely. But identical twins have identical DNA, and they vary extremely little by one or two points. And all the other factors that you name, such as environment, you know, where you were raised, your neighborhood, and so on, how wealthy you were, don't seem to play a factor. There was a great natural experiment in Scandinavia after World War II. They couldn't afford to keep children with parents, and hundreds of pairs of identical twins were split up and sent to different parts of the country and raised separately. They might not have even known they had twins. They probably didn't. When researchers tracked all this down, because the Scandinavians keep good records, and compared them, they found that the intelligence of the separated twins was almost identical. Now here's a conundrum. Intelligence is due to your parents and almost nothing else, but children are not as intelligent as their parents, on average. How can this be? In fact, well, I'm going to tell you why it must be. Researchers say that the average kid with an IQ of 130 comes from parents with an IQ of 118, and the average child of parents with 130 is 118. So there's variation between generations, both directions. Stephen Hsu, the 
Caltech polymath has a formula for it. He says that intelligence regresses to the mean, goes toward the average of the population by 40% on the average with kids. Let me show you how this works out. If you take the children of totally average parents, that's the 2% of the population that measure right at 100, those kids average also right at 100. Their distribution is a little bit narrower, but the amazing thing is how wide the distribution is. Kids whose parents have an IQ of 110 fall in at about 106, not quite as high. Kids with a parents 120, smarter parents, average 112. This is what it would look like if they averaged the same as their parents, 120, and you start to see the problem that there's a lot of very smart kids, but that was is inconsistent with the intelligence distribution staying stable from generation to generation. Okay, so here's 130, 140, we see the same thing. Regression to the mean. Conversely, as I've already mentioned, kids with an IQ of 130 typically come from more, have an average parental IQ of only 118. So it goes both ways. So the population intelligence remains stable if everybody has the same number of kids. If everybody has the same number of kids. If kids did have an average intelligence, same as their parents, you'd get a fat tail problem that would go from one generation looking like the high curve here to the other one being very flat with more smart and more very stupid kids in the second generation. That just doesn't happen. Now the researcher's explanation for this is that uh, intelligence is due to additive genes. 84% of our genome governs our brain. Intelligence is a factor of thousands of genes. Researchers were frustrated for a long time looking for an intelligence gene. There isn't one. Thousands of them. And occasionally, in the random distribution that comes with sexual reproduction, some kid gets a lucky combination and gets a whole bunch of alleles that go the same direction toward making him smart, or the other way. So it's really a random chance that you would be as smart or smarter than your parents. Actually, uh, if you're 100 and have an IQ of 130, you've got a one in five chance that, you're, that any given kid will be smarter than you. You're better off than Bill Gates. It's a, almost a lead pipe sense that his kids will not be nearly as smart as he is. That's the way regression to the, to the mean works. Okay, so let me conclude with some take home points. First of all, um, population uh, intelligence is stable only if people reproduce at the same level. There's a 40% regression to the mean, so you can't expect your kids to be quite as smart as you are, you smart people in this room. But on the other hand, that you people like you are where smart kids are going to come from for the most part. So marry a smart partner. That's your best shot. Your best shot in a lot of ways. Best smart shot at having smart kids. Your best shot at having a happy life. And lastly, Recognize that intelligence varies by population. Uh, so you want to have your population full of people like you. And that means to you Ukrainians who don't have a big immigration problem, don't get a big immigration problem. Because the, if the immigrants are not as smart as you are on the average, they will drag you down as I think you can observe elsewhere in the world. Well, I can see there are no Americans in the audience. I'm not shot yet, so let me conclude right here. Madam Toastmaster.